The 2024 NBA season is about one-third of the way in, and what a ride it's been so far. LeBron won the inaugural in-season tournament, Wambanyama made his entrance into the league, James Harden is once again playing for a new organization, and teams that were out of the playoff picture last year are solidifying themselves as one of the best in their conference this year. Sheesh, guys. What a ride it's been so far. And without wasting another second, let's dive right into everything the 2024 NBA season is proving so far. Let's first go over the in-season tournament, and I think it's fair to say at this point that it was a massive success. I don't remember the last time I tuned into so many games in November and early December. I don't think I've ever seen players being this competitive so early into the year. I mean... The Celtics were doing hack a drummond while up 32 points, Halliburton stole Dame Time's signature celebration, and LeBron James was playing like a finals MVP in December. Players loved it, fans loved it, and it was the perfect fix to give the NBA a bit more spice to start the season. The only thing they gotta fix up are those shiny new tournament floors, which caused many NBA players to slip and slide, slip and slide, and slip and slide. But wait, hold on. This scene ate from the in-season tournament. This is just Jordan Poole doing his thing and slipping on his own sweat. <laughs> if there's anything the 2024 season has proved about Jordan Poole so far, it's that he isn't him. The man had expectations to become Bradley Beal 2.0 in Washington, a high-level scorer who'd be averaging anywhere between 25 to 30 points per game. But instead, not only are the numbers showing that he's a 17 points per game guy on inefficient shootings, but he's become the joke of the NBA. I mean, turning around like Steph Curry but hitting the rim, burning the clock when you're down in the fourth quarter, and just all the silly turnovers has unfortunately made Poole the laughing stock of the league. Who isn't a joke, however, is Victor Wombanyama. The 7'4 phenom from France has proven that he is the real deal. Despite the horrible record of the Spurs, Wambanyama has been living up to the alien name given to him by LeBron, as he repeatedly shows us things we've never seen before. From his monster dunks to his ability to shoot threes, to his ability to finish around the rim, Wambanyama has proved that in a few years, he's going to be a problem. The Spurs still have a ton of work to do in order to become championship contenders, but with Wombanyama standing at the helm of that ship, there's a lot of things to look forward to when it comes to San Antonio. One team that I don't have too much hope for going forward, however, are the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, don't get me wrong, this team is good, like really good. They won the inaugural in-season tournament, Anthony Davis showed he's a beast, and LeBron showed that he's still one of the best in the game today. They're a team nobody wants to see in the playoffs, but therein lies the problem. There's still a lot of games to be played until then. Top heavy is what this team is, and judging from what we've seen of them after they won the in-season tournament, their top two players look a bit sluggish. And considering the load they have to carry on a daily basis, I'm not too sure if they can reach the finish line without breaking down. I mean, the talent level is higher than ever in the NBA, and with LeBron and AD aging, and with every team bringing their A game against the Lakers, they're going to be scratching and clawing their way for a playoff seed, and once they're there, I just can't help but think how much they'll have left in the gas tank. The Golden State Warriors, on the other hand, have proven they don't have that problem. This is the deepest bench the dynasty has ever had, and whether it's Steph Curry running the show or Chris Paul running the show, they have the ability to sustain a constant flow of offense without needing to run their stars to the ground. They've also shown that although they have lots of potential, that there's still a ton of work to do. Like, before the postseason starts, they've really got to get Draymond under control, and they've really got to develop the young players, especially Trace Jackson Davis, who's been everything the Warriors were missing. What this man brings is size, youth, length, athleticism, and more importantly, someone who could finish above the rim on one end and could protect the rim on the other. The 2024 season has also proven that the beard is officially back. He might not be averaging over 35 points per game, but surprisingly, he's been more efficient than he's ever been in his career, 
and if you watch him play, he looks like he's having a resurrection year. I mean, his ability to get to the basket, his ability to work in pick and rolls, and his ability to hit that step back three, he looks like the Houston version of James Harden at this point. Like, look at this play here, where he just completely beats his defender off the dribble and gets to the basket with ease. Only time will tell if Harden can exercise his playoff demons, but so far, so good. And that's great news for Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and the Clippers. Their biggest weakness over the last couple of years was their need to carry the team, and as a result, it led to injuries. But with Harden there to share the burden, the Clippers might just be able to stay healthy for once. Who's not having luck with health, however, is Harden's old teammate, Kevin Durant. Now, don't get me wrong, KD has been playing fantastic and his numbers back that up. But the only thing is that he's having teammate problems once again. Bradley Beal was supposed to make them unguardable as a team, but because of injuries, he's only played in six games so far, and with just Durant and Booker leading the charge, this Suns team won't have enough to beat the powerhouses in the league today. The good news for KD, however, is that there's still four more months left until the playoffs, so that gives Beal plenty of time to heal up and develop some type of chemistry with the team. But at the same time, he better hurry up because as of today, the Suns are 10th in the conference and an elimination in the play-in tournament would really put another stain in his career that Charles Barkley will call him out on. While I don't think the Suns will miss the playoffs, crazier things have happened. Like Ben Simmons, for example. How crazy is it that the quote-unquote next LeBron James will likely retire before LeBron James? <laughs> That's both a joke and the truth. Back problems are what Ben is suffering from these days, and with his style of play and his inability to shoot anything outside the paint, it's hard to see him continuing an NBA career for much longer with the talent levels in today's game. And the sad thing is, Zion Williamson is right on his tail. Now, things aren't so bad with Zion yet, but he still hasn't gotten his weight down. There's serious rumors that the Pelicans may let him go, and just like Ben, he still hasn't developed a reliable jump shot yet either. But hey, the good news for Ben and Zion is, at least their teams haven't lost 25 games in a row. The 2024 season has shown that the 2024 Pistons might just be the worst team in NBA history. Despite all their talent, they're in the midst of a 25-game losing streak, and I don't get it. I mean, they got Asar Thompson at number 5 in 2023, Jaden Ivey at number 5 in 2022, Cade Cunningham at number 1 in 2021, Killian Hayes at number 7 in 2020, and they also recently got the number 2 overall pick James Wiseman from the 2020 draft as well. And yet, by the time this video drops, despite all their lottery talent, they'll likely have the longest losing streak in NBA history. How a team with this much talent is playing this badly? is beyond me. I mean, the Orlando Magic have been rebuilding just like the Pistons, and as of today, they have a top four seed in the East, while the Pistons are still at the bottom of the barrel. Hopefully Detroit can turn things around next year, because if 2024 has shown us anything, it's that non-playoff teams can burst out onto the scene. Like, I've already mentioned the Magic in the East, but in the West, it's the Oklahoma City Thunder. That young team led by Shea Gilgis Alexander missed the playoffs in 2023, but has had a firm grip on the number two seed in the Western Conference all season long this year. And in my opinion, they're really close to becoming a perennial championship contender. SGA, J Dub, and Chet Holmgren are slowly turning into a big three tandem. And with all them being so young, this team has a good chance to become a beast. They've pretty much overtaken Luka and the Mavericks as the up and coming team in the West. Then, over in the East, despite the success of the Orlando Magic, it seems that 2024 has proven that nothing has changed when it comes to the top of the conference. Despite the Indiana Pacers putting on an offensive spectacle we've never seen before, the Bucks and Celtics are once again on a collision course for the best in the East, with the 76ers peeking in right through the window. And that doesn't look like it'll change this year.